Now, Maddie Bob, you already know what time of day it is, honey. We are going on vacation. Girl, y'all already know we went down there to that Dominican Republic last year and tore that bitch up. But this year, we taking it down there to Mexico, honey. Actually, Riviera Maya, Mexico. And girl, guess who coming with me? Guess, girl. Guess. Huh? You couldn't guess? Well, let me tell you. The cussing pastor. Ha, 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 ha. That is Matthews will be my guest judge July 10th through the 15th. Honey, I need you to rush over there right now and get your tickets at www.qscvacations.com. That's www.qscvacations.com. And honey, listen, don't meet me there, bitch. Beat me there. I love you. See you, Mexico girl. Come on here, pastor. Let's get down to business. All right, bitch. Sing a jingle. Spotlight session with T.S. Madison. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, bitch, on with the show. What's up, everybody? This is T.S. Madison, and welcome to a spotlight session with none other than me. Hey, guys, have you ever wanted to enhance your butt? Have you ever wanted to make your titties just a little bit bigger? Well, listen, we've all heard about those industrial-grade silicone pumping parties. Tonight, I have a special guest here who's going to break down what are the dangers and why you shouldn't participate in that type of situation? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Miss Talia Cassidine. Talia Cassidine, oh my God, after all this time, you have finally made it out here to the marvelous Chateau Girl. Yes, and it's marvelous. Yeah, well, honey, <laughs> you know, well, they say, well, I'm not gonna get into that on here. Well, well they, they say it's so cheap, but anyway. Oh, no, ma'am. Speaking of long time coming, you and I uh, have been talking for a very long time about something that was so dear and true to your heart. But before we get on that, I'd like for you to tell the people out there who you are and what it is that you do. All right, so uh, my name is Talia Castanine. I am the founder of Say No to Silicon Injections. Um, I'm also the director of trans women engagements for the Ubuntu Inc. organization. What is that? Ubuntu Inc. organization. Are you going to really introduce me to this after the show? Cause <laughs> I, I, is that is that Ubuntu? Ubuntu, Ubuntu Inc. It's a it's a new organization here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, they have some groups that are set up for trans masculine people, uh, which is called for the fellas, just for the fellas. Uh, for trans women, um, it's called Ladies' Night. Uh, we also have something called SOTI, which is spouses of trans individuals, because y'all, we have to understand transitioning, your spouse has to transition with you, so they need that support as well. Wow, this just blew me away that all of these orga organizations are going on right here in Atlanta. Well, child, you know, I live way over here on the on the back of God's yeah, back, Lord. but you know, it's it's I like living out here, but. You know, all of these things are going on for trans people, and and one of those organizations, it, one of those organizations was for trans men and trans women. It's it was well, the same organization. Uh, they just have groups that are separated. Oh, so just I, that's them. what I meant. They said one mm -hmm. of the groups was for trans men mm -hmm. and for trans uh, trans women too. Right. You know, for me, I have to say this: I'm 42 years old, and I'm just now really learning about all of the different pronouns and uh, you know, proper terms when addressing people. And sometimes a lot of people out there would like would say, oh, this stuff is so confusing, it's so this, is so that. I don't wanna learn that. And sometimes I empathize with them because I'm like, girl, this stuff is just like, it's too much. It's like, it's either he or she, you know, when, you, when you're in that thought process. Mm -hmm. But each time that I come into you know, contact with another trans woman or a trans man, I always make it my business before I start communicating with them to ask what are the proper pronouns to use when I'm communicating with you. So let's, let's just try that out, okay? Because I think what we have to do is we start, we have to normalize asking for pronouns. So um, when, if I, I come up to you, 
regardless if I know if you're a trans woman or a cis woman or whatever the case may be, you may be gender non-conforming. Mm -hmm. I'm going to introduce myself as, hi, my name is Talia Castellan, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. What's your name and pronouns? My name is C.S. Madison, and the proper pronouns is she, her, and hers with me as well. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And that's a respectful way of doing it. Well, wouldn't you say, let's, let, let me play devil's advocate here. I, I, okay. do it, I do it on the Queen's Supreme Court, but, you know, we're on the spotlight now. But I'm still going to play devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. Let's say a person may not want to go, because that's kind of intense, to be like, hi, my name is... Uh, Keisha and the proper pronouns are using me and she, her, and her. And what if somebody just walks up to you and just be like, "Well, you know, I, I go with the flow too." Okay, because you know, it, it, if every situation isn't always so formal, right? So now, if you say your name is Keisha, guess what? I'm just gonna pronounce, uh, introduce, you know, talk to you as Keisha. I'm gonna continue. To, I'm gonna take pronouns completely out of it. I'm just gonna say your name. Mm. Ah, like, hey, Keisha, you know. What can I get you to drink? You know, the very, very, very formal. Right. Okay, I get it. I get yeah. it. I get it. I get it. You know, I'm just trying for the people out there that's just watching to be like, girl. You know, some people just they don't they don't want to they don't want to respect. No, it, it a can lot be of simple. I think I think a lot of us think too much into it, mm -hmm. and that's what makes it harder. So, may I ask, what is it that you do outside of that? What do you do for a living? I know what you do, but I would, well, tell the people what you do because I, I, you're you, you're also an entertainer, but I, they they don't know deeply into that like that. But I want you to break it all the way down so that they know all the things that you do before we get on to really what you do. Okay, so um, I compete in pageants, um, not a lot. Uh, every blue moon, I might compete in a um, female impersonation pageant. Um, also, uh, professional wise, I'm the one that you don't want to see in Atlanta. That's it. So, <laughs> I was, that's the one I wanted you to tell her. That's it. Come on, girl. That's the one. I, I'm the one you don't want to see in Atlanta. If you see me in Atlanta, more than likely you've messed up. So, um, I'm a parking enforcer. So, I'm one of those ones that is most hated in Atlanta next to the cops. Uh, that are putting the yellow block, uh, locks on your tires. So you boots the girls' cars. You tooted and booted in the same time. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so and so when you walk in the room, it's like a lot of fear and trembling, like, girl. Or when they see you creeping around in your car, you creeping around like, hmm, I'm going to get you for your legal party. Oh, no, I'm not even creeping. I'm just sitting in my car, duck down. Oh, no. Waiting. That's what I'm doing. Oh. And then once you mess up, then I hop out the car and boot you. Oh, my yeah. God. So you are like the devil, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so my next thing to you is you are a transgender woman. Mm -hmm. And I also am a transgender woman. And we kind of share the same story when it comes down to enhancements. Um, I can give you a little bit of my story uh, I used to be a, a hooker and I walked the streets of Miami way back in the day and in walking those streets of Miami and also coming into my trans womanhood see I need to break this down so that people can understand when I was walking the streets of Miami I was still in transition however at one point in my mind, I thought I was complete. Like I thought I was, I, I, I thought I looked like a girl and you know, my, my clothes fit like a, a chick. But when I started walking the streets, it became competitive mm -hmm. for who's going to make the most money. Who's going to bring in the most funds. And the bigger your body was, the more money, the more money you mm -hmm. made. And the only way to enhance your body at that time, what we knew of was to go to the pump doctor. Well, needless to say, each year, something got bigger. Titties got bigger, booty got bigger. And then each time you get bigger, your competition gets bigger as well. Mm -hmm. And so it became a battle of the body. And so I suffered from silicone poisoning. I was pumped. Um, I got very sick. Uh, I lost my car. I lost my home because I was, in, I was in the hospital for months. And I have scars on my body right now from being pumped by industrial grade silicone, mineral oil, you know, things like that. And I'm going to be honest with you, Talia. 
I've never went and got, you know, like the scars repaired. Mm -hmm. I keep the scars to remind me of where I was in life at one point and also never do that shit again. Like battle wounds. Yes, they're battle scars for Mm -hmm. me. So your story is kind of similar to mine or no? Uh, kind of similar, but in different stages. Let me tell me about it. So I, uh, some may say I started my transition, but really I just wanted to be a cute boy at one time. Mm. And I was in the United States Army, and um, I I had really low self esteem, so I wasn't getting the attention when I went out to the nightclubs by people. You know, it's it was always a butt thing. So at first, when I got injected, it was um, just to enhance my butt. But around this time, I was also getting into the world of pageantry. Mm. And in pageantry, they want you to have that figure eight size um, shaped body. And you know, I was getting tired of being the first runner up in all these pageants and watching these really, really pretty girls win. So what did that mean? That means to, I needed to hurry up and do something. Right. So. Um, I actually went to a friend of mine, which is in in the community, and they told me about a person who pumps, and I went to get it done. And I actually got pumped to fit my gown. Ah. So yours was pumping to fit the gown. Mine was pumping to fit the bill. (laughs) Well, no, no, no. That came later. (laughs) (laughs) Because then I realized that pageants aren't cheap. Right. So therefore, not, not only do I need to go and get this enhancement, but how am I going to pay for the other gown that I need? Oh, so now I have to go into survival sex mode. Mm. So now that I'm in survival sex mode, now I got to look like that blow up doll type girl. I got to have the big breasts, the nice um, ass, the hips, all of that type of stuff. Um, but at the same time, everybody else was already having that. So then I covered myself with tattoos. So now I want to be the I want to be the girl that's that's not like them, but have a shape like them, but different, but just a little different. Oh, I went through a lot. So basically, it's a lot of it's a lot of psychological trauma. You think it is that causes us to do these things. We want to hurry up and be a woman, mm-hmm. or we want to hurry up and be bad in that gown. Mm-hmm. We want to hurry up and be, you know, the prettiest, the finest. And in all actuality, we're doing so much detriment to our bodies by pumping these foreign substances into the body because hell, they could tell you it's silicone, it could be it could be something else. Right. I remember one time that I was getting pumped and, and you know, I'm never gonna call these to pump people out because they don't pump anymore. Mm-hmm. And you know, it was also my choice to lay down mm-hmm. and do that. I had the decision like if I was gonna lay down and do it or I was gonna get up and be like, you know, cause these people aren't certified nurses or registered nurses or any kind of medical practitioner they're not these things they just a girl that gets a needle pack of needles from some girl that they know and they they pump your body me i went through so many things in my brain but this one night in particular i saw the person stick the syringe into the cup and their finger went inside of the cup Mm. and as they drew back their finger was covered in the substance and so was the syringe they took the syringe threw the syringe away and threw the cup away and i immediately jumped up and i said what is this that you're pumping me with because before like i've been pumped before and my girlfriend was using silicone and when she was using silicone, <laughs> bitch, whatever getting in, your, you, bitch, your finger go in there, your toe go in there, bitch, it's going in your body because this silicone is expensive. Right. And, you know, you can't just toss it in the trash like that. Then I found out that it was mineral oil that was going on, and I was like, oh, my God. And then I was like, well, I don't have any side effects from it because I've been pumped before from this particular person. And it ended up, you know, having a bad effect on me later on, you know. And my thing is, I was young, young girl, very young. This this had to be twenty over twenty years ago. 
And it's just, I sit back and I think about it now and I'm like, girl, why didn't you just get up from that mm -hmm. right then? What was it that made you still lay there and do this? And you know what, you know what it was? The tip drill video. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> really? The tip drill. <laughs> yeah, I see your ass because it ain't your thing because you a tip drill. You a t it was the tip drill video. And that mm -hmm. girl that was with those black panties on, blue, 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 I was like, okay, I got to have my boo. I, want, I wanted want, that. I need it. I need that. <laughs> I need that right there. I need to be built like that. And I think that's that mental thing you were saying earlier is that we mentally it takes over to the point where we don't, uh, we can't understand our wants versus our needs. Mm. It, you know, we may want that look, but in our mind, it, we're just telling us we need it. Mm. So that's why you didn't get up. Mm -hmm. That need, that fake need that's in your mind mm -hmm. got you to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to know more, about because I'm talking so much about me, because, and I knew when I brought you here that I was going to share a lot of my story with you because I've seen, you know, you really campaign hard against say no to silicone. I've seen you campaign so hard about, you know, the effects of silicone and, and, and whatever substance, foreign substance is being pumped into the body. I've seen you really go hard and you've been so passionate about it online. You know, I just want to, I'm going to be, I'm going to shut up y'all and I'm going to let her go. <laughs> well, I know that, um, you know, I, something that you mentioned earlier about um, looking more like a woman. Mm -hmm. um, I wish we would have had some um, diehard advocates back in the day that were educating a trans woman that no one can define your femininity. Mm. So it's not about looking more like a woman. It's just being more like yourself. Right. And, and, and that's the whole uh, reason why a lot of us go through these decisions is because we don't know how to just be ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to put on that massage that everyone else is looking at. We're letting societal norms bring us to that point. Mm -hmm. um, so when it came to my transition, I'm, I'm one of those girls who transition for the wrong reason. You know, doing pageants, that's not a reason to transition. No, it's, it's, it's not. It's not a reason to transition. They could have did hit pads for that, but it's hot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of sweating mm -hmm. going on. I didn't want to do all of that, so I went ahead and got the injections. Uh, but at the same time, um, you know, I almost lost my left leg because of it. Uh, I found out later on that the person who injected me, girl, she used freeze pack fluid. Freeze pack fluid? She used freeze pack fluid. Wow. You open, she, uh, she's... I don't even want to, I don't know if I should even explain how she made it. Cause somebody, like, I'd like to know how she you, made it. Know, okay. Yes. So they said she opened it up, poured it in a blender, mixed a little baby oil, mineral oil together, blended it up, put it in a freezer so that it foams up to the top. You scrape the foam off, put it in a little jug, label it silicone and pump. Yeah. That's what I had. So, um, you know, I got it injected. Um, everything was fine at first. And, you know, they were just telling me, you know, because the girls will really pump your head up and make it sound like they're really professionals when it comes to this type of stuff. And I am not a medical doctor. Let me just go ahead and say that right now. I just go off of my experience and things that I've learned. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, the swelling went down. So I'm looking in the mirror. And one thing about people who are getting pumped is they don't see what everyone else sees. So I'm looking in the mirror. I'm like, well, honey, this ain't big back here. Yeah, I'm like, where did it go? Where did it, I was like, what, did I absorb it? Yeah. You know, so I, I went back a week later to get pumped again. I asked the girl, I said, is it fine? She said, oh, yeah, you're fine because your skin is good and stretchy. It's, it's, it'll be fine. So I went and got pumped a week later. And I want to say one more week later, I was in the hospital. Uh, I had a really bad cellulitis infection, uh, which is pretty much an infection in your, uh, in your tissues. Uh, and my leg turned into putty. So if I was to squeeze my leg, I could see my handprint in my leg for at least an hour. It literally felt like putty. Um, so I was not having blood circulation to my left leg. And uh, if I didn't, if it didn't start showing signs of improvement within a week, they were going to amputate it. Wow. So I, of course, I, I'm walking. Um, I think I'm one of those people who was put on earth to be that test. I'm gonna, I don't wait, test dummy. I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. Yeah, the test dummy. Because I can overcome it. 
and I've been able to overcome it, and I'm strong enough to tell my story. So that's, I, and I think that's why sometimes bad things happen to you. It actually happens for a good reason. Right, because you're sitting right here right now, and, and you don't know who's going to watch the show and be like, wow, you know, I was just thinking about going to get pumped, or somebody told me about this girl that knows how to pump, and, you know, I, I so I get it, you know. But I want to go back a little bit. So you got pumped, you almost lost your leg, how did they get it out? So I was <laughs> a lot, it's really not, I, I can't really explain. It's not, it's not 100% out. Um, I was in the military when I got pumped, first and foremost. So I was scared because this is a, a non-approved uh, surgery. I'm just sitting here like Uncle Sam about to tear my behind up. I'm about to be dishonorably discharged, all of that type of stuff. So I had to, I had to keep my mouth shut. And just act like, you know, oh, if y'all find something, oh, that happened before I got in. You know, that type of situation. So it was a lot of antibiotics um, that they put me on. Um, and that was really about it. Now, it's because I don't have that round butt no more. She just, she just wide. But I think most of it pretty much went down my legs. Um, whatever they, they did do when I was in the military, it just eased and smoothed down. Um, because that infection that was in my left leg spread to the right leg. Oh. So I, I have to be extremely careful now of flare-ups because cellulitis can be a temporary thing or it can be a chronic thing. And right now it's chronic for me, so I'll be living with those type of pains in my legs for life. Right, right. Oh, my God. And you, you, what about your breasts? Okay, so peer pressure again. Well, peer pressure mixed with uh, bad surgeons. Uh, there's there's a lot of surgeons in this world that don't want us to transition just because of their own biased feelings. Mm. And um, I will call a surgical office and, and ask them about getting breast implants. And they're like, oh, sure, it's $2,500. I'm like, okay, cool, I got $2,500. So I'm going to my consultation and they find out, oh, she's trans. Oh, well, in that case, it's $5,000 for you. Well, I don't get that. I got the 2500 that you told me. So after going to about three surgeons who all did that to me, I felt I had no choice but to go get silicone in my chest again. But they told me, you know, my friend, another girlfriend told me, just, well, my other girl, she she got the good stuff, Talia. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Yeah, they always tell you that the girls got the good stuff. And you know why they tell you that? Because they getting pumped on the side by this girl. They and just so, you know, they, yeah, they want to make sure that they get their little fill in. I know. Yeah. So I, I went to this girl, you know, she was another very professional, wore scrubs, nice clean apartment, all of that good stuff. Um, she, she even gave me a, 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 a little run through on how to walk with new breasts. You gotta walk a certain way so they jiggle and all of that. Yeah, yeah. it was a mess. So um, I went and had my breasts injected by her. Um, and on the way home, you know, they put the little cotton balls on you to, to stop the silicone from coming back out. Okay, the silicone started squirting out of my chest. So I'm calling her and saying, um, baby, there's silicone just drooling down my chest. She said, oh, don't worry about it. You, you're probably a little hot and your pores is open. She said, turn on the AC. what I do? I turn on the AC. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Wait. Mm-hmm. What? And this was in Atlanta? I, well, I went to North Carolina to have this done. Every every place, every city, every state has a different pump doctor that does a different thing. <laughs> My God, today. But I, I I mean, this is something I don't know about. So therefore, if you're doing this procedure, I'm thinking you know what you're talking about, especially since my girlfriend said, this girl got the good stuff. Yeah. So I'm thinking, you know, my chest was just, you know, the skin was really tight because I had no, no breasts. So I'm thinking, mm, okay, maybe it's just coming out a little bit because the skin just hasn't stretched enough. But I went back again to the same girl um, about a month later to have her inject my breasts again because this time I saw another issue. So my nipples started going from here to here. So she said, oh, no problem. We just gonna move it over. I said, well, how are you gonna move my nipple over? She said, we're gonna inject you on one side of your nipple and just push it over with the fluid. That sounded like a, you know, some type of logical, right? No. Cause then they went from here to here to there. So <laughs> eventually I just had to just say stop. 
you know, I, I had actually accomplished the size that I wanted, which was actually a 36C. Um, but then gravity hit me because silicone is extremely heavy and they started to sag. And then before you know it, I had a 36D. Uh, the silicone started getting extremely hard. Um, she would say, just, you know, massage it. It would be an issue. Um, although when I would massage it, they would swell up in size. So now I'm bigger than a 36D and I had to wait for the swelling to go down. You know, um, pageants again, I'm getting ready to put on my gown. It's a little, it's a little loose in the top part. So guess what I do? I squeeze on my breasts. Cause I know it's gonna make them swell up. You know, I was doing really, really dangerous stuff like that just to make people happy about how they see me. Not about me being happy. I was doing it to make other people happy about what, how they, you know, what they look when they see me. Um, and all this time, I was not trans. What, you didn't identify as trans? I did not identify as trans. That's how badly I wanted to fit in. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, during this whole period, mm -hmm. you were not even identified as trans. I wasn't. What were you identified? Were you just a drag queen? I, I was just a feminine boy. Do I, I, just, I just called myself a feminine boy that did drag. And did pageants. Mm hmm But you were, you had silicone or silicone-esque things in the body, foreign substances. Mm hmm And then you had this one scare, and you went back and put it here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's another little side story. It, you know, I, I never saw anything positive out of life. Mm. Um, I never saw successful black people. I never had a chance to see successful trans women, trans men, anybody LGBTQ. I never saw any of that. You know, I've, I've heard about the death race. You know, I never saw my life going past 30 years old. Oh. So at that time, why do I care? Right. You know, that was my mindset is that I, I, if I don't see myself going past 30 and I'm 25, girl, I got five years to live it up. So you were just living for the moment, actually. Living for the moment. Mm. It wasn't until um, the pageant that I was trying to win, because I eventually did win it after I got all this silicone put in my body. Go fig. Um, I went through a depression for that whole year because now I'm looking in the mirror and I can see what I did to myself. And I don't like this girl that's in the mirror. I did not like her. So I'm wearing baseball caps, jerseys, do-rags, all of that stuff to cover it up. It took me a long time to understand where I was going at with my transition and um, finally living a life where I'm unapologetic and I'm proud to be a trans woman. You know, things happen for a reason. You know, I may have transitioned for the wrong reasons, but it was supposed to happen. Wow, that was really deep. Did you, did you eventually have uh, these procedures removed? I did. Um, so basically, I was, I was in the hospital, fevers, um, one thing about silicone injections that a lot of people don't understand is that your body is constantly fighting silicone. So your immune system is getting worn out. I mean, come on, y'all. If you've had this for like five years, 10 years, or whatever the case may be, your, your immune system is, is sitting here like, girl, how much longer can I keep fighting this? And my immune system started to shut down um, to the point where I was getting stuff that you thought was a myth. You know, I went into the hospital and I was in the hospital for two weeks to find out I had cat scratch fever. Like who gets cat scratch fever for real? What is that? You know, a, a, a cat scratches you, there might be a little bit of fecal matter because they use a litter box and th that little matter gets into the scratch and now you got a fever. Something that nobody usually gets. And I've had cats for years. Um, so my doctor was pretty much telling me, look, it's the silicone that's in your chest. That's what's causing the most of, the, of, of these issues. And he's like, you know how many endings are in a baseball game? And I was like, I said, yeah, I believe I know how many endings in a baseball game. He said, well, guess what? You're on your last ending. You got to get this out of you. Uh, luckily, I, I had a situation. Can't talk about it. Still on the gag order. But I want some money. Uh, so I found a surgeon in South Florida uh, named Mr. Dr. Timothy Alexander. I can say the name right. Yes. Okay, so Dr. Timothy Alexander at the, uh, the Florida South Cent no, South Florida Center for Cosmetic Surgery. Uh, to do the procedure of a double mastectomy to remove the silicone from my chest. 
Um, that surgery cost me about $13,000. Now, had it not been for that little money I got, I would have been dead. I would have. I, 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 and I know it. You know, I, I had got so sick to the point where I couldn't speak. Um, I, I could barely walk on my own. I mean, my body was just shutting down. Um, you know, I, I was so afraid to let my family see me. I, I made sure that my brother could not come to the hospital. I didn't want him to see me like that. Um, I made sure that my mom stayed home. I literally went through this by myself in the hospital because I didn't want somebody to witness that. Because I knew, I, looking in the mirror, I knew it was painful. Uh, so I went ahead and had the procedure um, and they removed 10 pounds of silicone from my chest. Wow. 10 pounds. Um, you know, aesthetically, if you were to see pictures of me in the past, notice my breasts didn't look like there was any issues. I mean, they, they was really pretty. I liked them. They, you know, swimsuit baby. That was my category when pageant. Um, but when he cut me open, he said that they had to double mask and one of the nurses threw up and walked out of the room because it smelled like there was a dead body inside of me. Um, and I think a lot of people are walking around sitting here like, you know, I don't have complications, but they really don't know what's going on under their skin. Right. Uh, so I healed up pretty nicely, as I thought. Uh, but when it comes to silicone injections, doctors are still learning yes. about this stuff. It's, I mean, th nobody's going to school yeah. for a class called silicone injection. Yes, and how to remove. Right. So this is really guessing games. Um, so my daughter's like, you know, come back in two months and we'll put implants in. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I done sat him and, and raised some more money. <laughs> Father God. 2500 more dollars. The first price I got a couple years ago when they told me no. Right. Um, and I went back down to South Florida to get the implants put in. I was all happy, honey. I'm laid up with the wrap on me. You know, I'm, I'm going live because I want to be like the rest of the girls. Right. You know, oh, the chest pain is so tight. And, you know, I wanted to be, you know, everybody goes through that little that little thing. So I wanted to do it too. Right. Um, and then a week later, I started noticing little holes on the incision of my um, implants. And uh, I found out the hard way that even though he removes silicone from my chest, you can't get all of it out. It's, it's impossible to remove all the silicone you put into your body. And that silicone, since it damages your immune system as well, it slows down your healing. So in those two months, I wasn't done healing. So now the implant is falling out of my left, out of the right side of my chest. No. I'm sitting here taking selfies, like, like cause I can't see down there. So I'm just sitting here like, is, is that my implant? So eventually it opened up completely, um, but the implant was just hanging now. Had to go back down to South Florida again to have it taken out. Oh. <laughs> so once it was taken out, they were like, you know, oh, the left side is fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to let you heal on the right side. Dear God. And, um, and then you'll come back for the implant again. So I was like, okay, so are you going to stitch me up? Because now mind you, it wasn't a surgeon when he took the implant out. He literally numbed me in a circle around my chest. Now this is a board for a certified surgeon, y'all. So he numbed me all the way around my chest. He said, taking a deep breath, I said, he said, let it out. And he just yanked it out of my chest. So I'm just sitting here like, are you gonna stitch me back up? He's like, no, that's not gonna work on you. You're gonna have to heal from the inside out. So for the next month to a month and a half. You were draining. I was just draining because there was an open wound this large underneath my chest. You know, I, I took a picture on, on social media where I actually held open my chest and you can see inside where the implant was. So, you know, it started to heal. It healed, It actually healed really good. Um, but then there was another problem. There's still that other implant in there. And once again, my body wants to reject anything that's not natural. So then I started having these spasms really bad on this side to the point where it crushed the implant and it leaked. So not only did it leak, but it folded the implant into a point. And that point started to scratch its way out of my skin. So I'm calling the surgeon again, and I'm sending him pictures. And I said, there's a point under my breast. And I was like, what is this point? He said, I don't know. It might be a little abscess or something. You might have to come down here and check it out. No, I'm not doing that again. No, 
you know, I don't, I don't make all the coins in the world. I can't be, you know, leaving work, traveling, and all that type of stuff. I, I just can't do it. So he's like, well, just see your boy, your your um, your doctor, and see what they think. But of course, whenever you have silicone injections and you've had any type of medical procedure to get it out, you you're pretty much stuck with that surgeon, because a lot of other surgeons don't want to touch you, because now uh, you could be a liability, a, a liability issue if something was to go wrong. Um, so eventually, that little that little point that I was talking about, it broke through, and that was the implant. So now I have this hole about this size with the implant sticking out of my chest. So <laughs> I can't do that. I just <laughs> girl, I, girl, I'm over here like f- I can't do that no more. I, they, I'm they really gone. listening to this story and I'm like, oh my god. So finish, please. Okay, so I I went to I I, I got bold. You know, I I, I call my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I call. I call the surgeon. And I said, "Look, this implant is hanging out my chest. Well, you gonna have to come back down here." No, I'm not. And I hung up the phone on. I just completely hung up on him. You did, don't tell me you did it. Yeah, I went to the gas station. I went and got me a goodie powder and a BC powder. I didn't know which one would be the strongest, so I said, "You know, I figured." I, Maddie, turn around. Oh so my I just went, god! <laughs> so I went ahead and got both of them. I downed them both, and as I downed them, I grabbed the implant and I snatched it out of my chest. I mean, how else was it going to come out? I wasn't driving back down to Florida. Girl, you supposed to took your ass back down there to Florida? Well, who was going to give me some gas money? Oh I didn't know God. you then, Maddie. I, I, oh, <laughs> I would have I definitely gave you some money to get back down there to get that. But no, I, I felt like I had exhausted all of my connections. You know, my mom took out, uh, my, my biological mother took out about two to three weeks oh. from work just to see me after my first surgery to, to nurse me back to health. I couldn't just, I, I didn't feel comfortable continuing to ask people for help. So I, I, I took matters in my own hand and I just snatched it out. And like the first one healed open, I let that one heal open as well. My God today. <laughs> my God. But you know, I, I felt, but the weird part is I felt so good. Because my body was in pain because this this thing is boiled up in, in my chest. So when I pulled it out, I'm just sitting here like, oh, I can breathe. It felt good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a weird person, y'all. I'm not, uh, gory stuff does not bother me. Girl! This, what? You just, where was it? It was, it was just right. It was, it was right here underneath. And where, you just right on the decision. And, and there's actually pictures of it as well because as I'm pulling, I'm taking pictures with the with the, ah! because I want look look, look if people are not going to believe the story if it's not documented. Nobody was going to believe that if I did not document it. So I said, you know what, I'm a I'm a pull, snap 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 pull it right on out. Oh my God! So this means that. You boot cars because you was mad at the motherfucker. It gets my frustration out, y'all. I'm it telling takes you. Your, you know, it's, it's, it's therapy. It's therapy. You know, when somebody comes up to my car and they call me all kinds of names and I'm just sitting here reading them back back on, that's therapy. You have to get your frustration out. I ain't, I ain't about to punch no walls, so I might as well punch it and boot somebody's car. Dear God in yes. heaven. So you... Girl, I'm just sitting here thinking about all these cities right here, girl. Uh, all of them. All of them. Me, and me just... <laughs> it's just falling out. Mm-hmm. Or me having surgery and then it's just flat chest. I could actually. You want, want me to show you? No. You don't want me to show <laughs> I don't know if they'll let go because they might show it. They might. No, I can actually just show you the, the, the scar so I can show you what, how, it went, how it went. Yeah, let me see the scar. Okay. Show the scar. Because so, I, 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 I don't mind showing well, people yeah. because um, sometimes you have to see the people at their worst. Or see bad situations so that it can really impact you. I, I could just be sitting here talking all day long, but it's not really going to impact you versus actually seeing it. You know, I, I saw this thing recently. Um, this guy was giving a, a little lecture, and he said, do your hand like this. Go along with it. Because I'm going to show you how sight, what sight does to you. Do this. Now, now put the circle on your cheek. That's your chin. Oh. You see that? So that... <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl, you, girl, you. But but we are we are people. We're humans. We go off of sight. You could, you listen to me giving you instructions, but you went off of sight. 
that's why I show my scars to people. Oh, now that was a good analogy. Mm -hmm. You like that? You said, do your hand like this. Mm -hmm. Now put your hand on your cheek. Mm -hmm. And you did this, and I went to my chin because I saw you doing that. It was that was a great analogy. Went off a sight. So okay, so I'm gonna pull this up. It's, I'm not. I'm gonna let the, the nip part show. But I'm not sure the camera can see it though. Yeah. You see the, where the little dent is right here? I do. That's where the implant was pulled out. Oh my god! And I'm actually cut from the center of my chest all the way back to my armpit. That's how they removed the silicone. Ah. Uh. But you know, I'm still here. I'm still here. Oh and, my and, and I'm god. here because I went to a surgeon who at least took the silicone out the right way. You know, the healing process is, is touch and go. How many years ago was this? This was June the 19th of 2015. So this is about five years ago almost. Mm -hmm. And you haven't, I, you haven't, have you had any more uh, no, I was surgeries? No, I was supposed to go back and get implants years ago because he wanted me to, instead of two months, because we knew that was too soon. Right. He wanted me to heal for at least a year to two years. Um, but with me starting Say No to Silicone Injections, I started a scholarship called the Divine Cast and I Transition Scholarship, which is named after my gay mother who passed away because of silicone injections. So, okay. Mm hmm All right. I want to rewind back and then go back to that. So, mm -hmm. so time step me y'all on that when I can go back to that. You are from the house of Castadine. Right. Talia Castadine and, and the mother of the house was Tanisha Castadine. Tanisha Castadine. Yes. That was my girl. She came out here. I remember the very first, I, I, when I moved, when I bought this house out here, and I had been in here a couple of years, Tanisha came out here and, uh, and she visited me. Mm -hmm. And we sat at the table. She talked. She told me her story. And uh, she was getting ready for a pageant or whatever. And, you know, we talked for a long time. And we, we, she's, I loved her when that when she came here. Fast forward to some years, I get the news all over the Facebook and this stuff, and she passed away. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Well, what happened?" Because it was so it was such a mystery, right? It was. And uh, of course, you call around, you call around, you be like, "Well, what happened to her? Like, what happened?" Mm -hmm. This is my first time hearing a a come a solid answer that what that's happened. what happened. Okay, so I try to describe silicone because a lot of people, we, we make it seem like industrial grade silicone is the worst of worst, which it, it is, um, but we all, but saying it like that makes it seem like medical grade silicone is it's good. better. But, yeah, because you do think that. Right, So, but I, I look at it like milk. Okay, so we get the industrial grade silicone is, um, is the whole milk, the mm -hmm. regular whole milk. Yes. And the medical grade silicone I think of as lactate milk. Because lactate milk lasts longer than that whole milk. One's gonna expire before the other. But eventually, if you leave them out, they're gonna go bad. Both. Both, Both of them are gonna go bad. And that's how I try to look at it. Um, so a lot of the times when we hear people having immediate issues, that's usually industrial, but it also could be medical if it went into your bloodstream. But Tanisha was, um, she went down to Jacksonville, Florida to get injections done. And um, they was getting ready to have a, a pageant that weekend. She was injected on a Saturday. She got sick that night and couldn't go to the pageant that Sunday. She had, um, had somebody drive her back down to Tampa that Monday. She went to the hospital. By that Wednesday, she was brain dead. And they went ahead and pulled the plug. What happened? Did it spread? Did it pulmonary embolisms? Um, this is where the silicone injections travel through your blood system, gets into your lungs, and, and just blocks everything. Um, they put her in an induced coma, I believe. Oh yeah, they do. They do that. Yes. Yeah, it's 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 not a pretty thing to watch somebody with that type of pain because these doctors were pers were saying that she had this or she had that, but they weren't touching the fact that she got silicone injections. Well, did they keep it a secret at first? Because when I went in the hospital for for the situation that happened to me. I tried to keep it a little secret because mm -hmm. I didn't want to get a, the person that punked me in trouble, you know, because I was like, they're going to blame them when it was also my fault, too. I could have I could have got up. I've learned that even if you you're honest about it, some of these 
some of these guys, especially these doctors, um, they have this mentality that, you know, they don't went to school for all these years. They know what they're talking about. Uh, you have to meet one of these surgeons who can say, look, I, I don't know what's going on. We got to send you somewhere else. The, and yeah. that wasn't the situation because she actually told them she had the silicone. But they just treated her for pneumonia instead. Mm. You see what I mean? I do. Because they, they don't know enough information to know that this is signs of silicone injection um, issues. But it's very similar to pneumonia. And I think that's the weird thing about silicone injections is that it, it's hard to pinpoint if that is what is causing the issue because it can mask itself as different situations. You know, I had um, an ultrasound and all of that stuff of my chest. Guess what my silicone injections looks like? What? Fat. So to a doctor with an untrained eye, you got silicone injections? I can't tell. It looks like fat on your on your x-ray. Right. Wow. Because they don't know anything about it. They don't know. it. Yeah, they, they just don't. My God. Although there is a surgeon now in South Florida, which is known to be like the specialist, um, Dr. Um, Alberto Gallerani. Mm. Um, what about the one in Baltimore? There's one in Baltimore that's, that specializes in doing it for the girls too. What is his name? I, I don't know. It's, it's a lot of surgeons up north. Baltimore and New York have surgeons who are doing silicone injection removal. Although it seems like the, the doctors are arguing with each other. You know, one saying we can do it with lipo. The other one saying we can't do it with lipo. You know, the one saying that this is issue is going to happen, that issue is going to happen, and it's, it's, it's no science of how to do it. Right. And, and I think there's reasons why there's no science to it because our body takes it differently. So, you know, the issues that I have, and, and I, don't want, I know there's going to be somebody watching this who is, who's nervous boots. Yeah. They're going to be ready to run to the emergency room. And take all this stuff and try and to get it all, out. But my problems are not your problems. Your problems won't be the same as mine. You know, I, I, I had some side effects that some girls haven't had. Um, you know, I had a, a one young, this is a young lady on YouTube, really um, a famous girl. I can't remember her name. She's real, real, real pretty. Um, she actually went paralyzed because of silicone injections. Yeah, everybody's body responds different to mm -hmm. it. Everybody's body. And it's also according to what story you got to tell. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to have that story. Just like I told you my story, your story was way more intense than mine. Because, mm -hmm. you know, they were they, they did cultures on it. They, 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 and every time they did a culture on mine, it was like, well, they don't know what... what Because, what like you said, the untrained doctor on that, mm -hmm. they didn't know what, the, what it was. It was just like, girl, you know, it looked as if I was uh, a diabetic patient that was, in, was taking... Uh, insulin wrong, mm -hmm. and it caused me to have because my stuff started coming up like boils, mm. trying to get out. Right, I know another girl that, that happened to. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was boils, and it was it was just it was draining and draining and draining. So they were treating, you know, this get antibiotics, mm -hmm. and the antibiotics did flush it out of the flush it out of the body, it did do that. It made those boils pop and they it just drained. And when I say antibiotics, as they go to for doctors, it's, it's like, okay, good. I mean, it, antibiotics is a good thing. But after I start feeling better, what are we gonna do then? I mean, is the antibiotic, are you gonna put me on permanent antibiotics? Be, uh, antibiotics? Because I, I'm pretty sure you can't do that. Right. So um, it, it's, it was just a mess. Yeah, I've had some of it scraped. <laughs> I had it scraped, removed, mm -hmm. cleaned. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they cleaned the area because it, it was, Areas like like I have them on this side. Like an area I had like a put tattoo on it. You see, then I got little mm -hmm. stains from it. You know, here and there or whatever. And I'm not ashamed. Let me let y'all know something. I'm not ashamed of that stuff at all because for me it reminds me never to do that stuff. Even when the thought comes through your mind, like, bitch, I want to get this right cheap. You know, and, and this is my thing with with Tanisha. This is what I wanted to say. What made Tan Tanisha's titties was big, Tanisha had body, what made her want to go and do this stuff? She was done. Let she me, was finished. Let me tell you, I am my mother's daughter. I am my mother's daughter. Tanisha went and got this stuff because of pageants. Oh, no. You know, um, she was trying to win, you know, I don't want to name the pageants, but um, she was trying to win a pageant, a really big one, and the young girls kept beating her. You know, they could wear certain things. They had a certain look, but, you know, with her being a more seasoned girl, she had to look this way or whatever the case would be. And then, you know, there's so many people out here 
just like you know when this video uh, with, with the comment section how they, people just love to come and just read they just want to talk a lot of mess um, people would take it to, to Facebook and say oh Tanisha she's just old and outdated and, and blah 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 and eventually that got to her um, she made a video and posted it on Facebook where she was talking about how hurt she was by the people downing her de degrading her and reading her um, and that's what made her go out and get more injections. She thought she needed it. No. Uh, but in my eyes, the woman was perfect. You know, um, I, just like your, your interactions with her was very similar to mine. A lot of people realized uh, I was actually going to commit suicide the day I met Tanisha. I heard about her, I love makeup. And so I went and I, I was gonna drive up to North Carolina where I didn't know anybody. And I was gonna park my car somewhere walk into some woods and kill myself. Why? Um, you know, I, I'm a post-war veteran, first and foremost. I served in Iraq. Uh, and uh, you know, from that and, and trying to live my life openly and unapologetically, um, it got to me. But you know, I was like, you know, let me go on MySpace. This is a long time ago. I went on MySpace and I saw a flyer that Tanisha Cast and I was performing at a club in, in North Carolina, the same city I was in. And I was like, you know what? I want to meet this painted woman one time before I go. So I went to the club. I snuck backstage, and I was like, oh my God, I'm, I, I, my name is Talia. Uh, nice to meet you, um, Tanisha. You know, I was like, well, how are you? Tanisha looked me in the eyes and she said, baby, I got three T cells. I'm dying, but I look fabulous. That night she became my mama. That bluntness of somebody going through some really, really hard times and still having that positive energy is what pulled me out of suicide. And that's how she became a mother. Mm, by just sharing her, her story. Truth, the, you know, truth can set you free, but it'll also liberate somebody that's listening. Yeah, and that's why for me, I've always used my platform, as long as you done seen me. Even when I was back hustling, I've always used, when I got an opportunity to get in a space where I could speak and people were listening, I would tell them all the bad shit that was going on with me. Mm -hmm. I mean, because, I mean, th that truth, like I said, it's, it can be liberating to somebody, and there's nothing more far from the truth about saying that your blessings, uh, your, you get blessed from being a blessing to others. Yeah. And I truly, truly believe that. And, and, Tanisha was that blessing to me, which is the reason why when she passed away, I started the Divine Cast and I Transition Scholarship uh, because she was always known for giving back to people, mm -hmm. whether it was a place to sleep, because I remember had, she had about five or six kids in her house. We all had pallets on the living room floor, but we, she made sure we was fed, had clothes on our back. Um, I was the only one with a car, even though I couldn't afford no gas, she put gas in that car. <laughs> <laughs> we was riding dirty with no car insurance, but you know, we, we, you know she took care of us. Um, so I, I started that, that scholarship named after my mother. Um, I couldn't, you know, my story was say no to silicone injection, couldn't save her, but I felt like her life can continue to save other people by, by keeping that legacy and that, that, that name, the Divine Castellan Transition Scholarship. Mm. Um, and basically what that scholarship does is that we award people a certain amount of funds to help them with their transition. So you can't sit here and say, I can't afford my hormone therapy when we're sitting here telling you that we're gonna pay for it. Right. You know, um, the first person who went through that, that scholarship, um, we, paid, we got her help with her, uh, her breast augmentation. Now, of course, I'm, I'm still small. You know, I, I'm not rich. I have to go off of donations that I receive. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the time, we could only pay for her deposit for her surgery. And that, just from somebody wanting to help, motivated that woman like there was no no tomorrow. Right. I mean, she was calling every family member in the world to see if they'll get her care credit. I got this deposit paid, I'm getting this surgery, I need some help. Mama came up with that money in three months. Okay, I, I, I wanna ask a question about mm -hmm. that. So is it just for, for you know, cosmetics or, or what about for for living arrangements? Because see, here's the thing: when, when we start getting down to that notion of, you know, we we got a, a, a scholarship or a program that's going to help the girls pay, pay for surgeries, and and stuff like that. What stops them 
from getting into that mind space of I got a 36D. Oh, she got a 36E. Oh, I want my titties bigger. Mm -hmm. That's the, the, the cosmetic become super cosmetic. Like, I want bigger titties because she's got bigger titties. You feel me? You know what? At, at the end of the day, I can't stop everybody from getting silicone injections. And I had to, you know, I used to cry every time I heard about somebody getting pumped. Or every time I heard about somebody dying of silicone injections. I can't save the world. But what I can do is is motivate other people to watch what they say to each other. Mm -hmm. Because it's that peer pressure and those societal norms that makes you overlook all of that type right. of stuff. So if I'm sitting here telling you, and I know that you could possibly get silicone injections, my first thing is complimenting you. Baby, you're beautiful. Yeah. Oh, you have the lips that I don't have, honey. I got white people in my system, so you know I got small lips. You is you, you got the full lips. You got this going on for you. Oh, you, you're young. You can do this. You can do that. You know, I'm trying to give you all of that self esteem boost. Mm -hmm. And then your program is for for them to do it the right way, not under the table. To do it the right way, but it's not just surgery. Okay. Yeah, then that's what I wanted to it's understand. Not, because uh, transition encompasses a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You know. I may have wanted the breasts and the hips and the ass and all of that type of stuff to, to say that I'm a woman. But literally, your transition starts in your head. In the mind. In the first. So if, if, if you feel like you're a trans woman, you're a trans woman. If, if that's what you're saying, that what's going on in your head mentally that you're trans, you're a trans woman. I'm mm -hmm. going to respect you as the pronouns that you say. Um, so therefore, you may not want those surgeries because not everyone wants the big breasts. You know, I... I I don't even want my the breast implants anymore. But that doesn't make you any less of a trans but woman. But it, it doesn't make me any less. And, and it's the same thing about SRS surgeries. Mm -hmm. I say the same thing to people. Just because I don't have an SRS surgery, mm -hmm. sexual reassignment surgery, does not make me any less of a trans woman that has it. And I definitely don't want it. I don't want it. Mm -mm. But it's, you know, but transition also means um, hair, makeup, lashes, clothing, anything that will make you, you know, whatever level, well, that's really, I wouldn't say that there's a level to transition, but whatever you see your transition mentally going at, mm -hmm. that's what this helps you with. But see, the thing about it is cisgender people transition all the time too. Mm -hmm. Transition in, the, they, they transition in their space of living, because that's a part of transition. Mm -hmm. They transition in the mindset of the way they, th of the way they think, even the way they, they put their their life in perspective. Transition is bigger than just physical. Mm -hmm. It's mental, it's spiritual, it's financial. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's, it's so much, I'm, gl I'm glad you said that because sometimes you have to walk with confidence. Yes. You know, it'll be some days where I'm just sitting here like, oh girl, I'm so clocky. I'm, I'm nervous to, to go outside. Explain clocky to those that okay, don't may so not know. Okay, so clocky is, you know, I, I might feel like, you know, I'm a little broad in the shoulders today, or, you know, they might be able to see that old Adam's apple right there, or, you know, just the little flaws of, well, can't well, what you flaws. deem What well, I would deem as flaws. flaws right. Um, you know, the moments where I start walking with my hands like this because these are some big old hands. You know, I, I'll just walk around the you know public like this, just so nobody would see it. Have you ever been out? I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna ask you this question, and I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so this might help somebody. You have you ever been out and you saw another woman that looks just like you? I have. That was a woman, a sister, a sister, a sister woman. And see, this is the thing with us. We all, the, we, we, we work so hard on our transition because we're looking at each other mm -hmm. as trans women. We looking at other trans women say, oh, she fish, oh, she sickening, oh, she this. When, bitch, I look like my mama them. Everybody has a twin. I look like my mm -hmm. mama them. I look like my aunt. Some days I wake up in the morning, my aunt that's, that's, that, that has did the ultimate transition, honey, she's in heaven. I look at a picture, a photograph of her, and I'm like, oh, my God, the same. we have this, the same eyes, the same facial structure and all this stuff. And it's just like, Madison, why would you run down here and try to change features or or try to what what you're done mm -hmm. completion starts here in the mind once you start to realize your worth and then you start walking with that confidence because like i say with those days where i feel like i'm clockable we have though everybody has those days yeah but but you still got to walk with like, like like baby and, it and is no what it is that's, that's pretty so, so if i'm walking to the gas station door 
and I feel like I'm clockable, baby, I ain't about to let you know it. I'm about to walk nonstop as if I'm about to run into that dough. I bet you that man is going to grab that dough for me. Yes, because yeah, I was just going to get ready gonna to say, grab that dough. guess what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Some man or some person is going to come in, in the least beautiful you feel mm -hmm. and grab you and say damn baby or oh that's a beautiful shirt you got on damn your hair pretty mm -hmm. or golly what's your number because it it, it happens fails. it happens to us at our worst mm -hmm. i don't been it i don't been girl no makeup on girl that toe up ass i don't put makeup on today and i bet you ain't nobody gonna say nothing to me on the way home <laughs> listen that little toe up ass little richard wig i be walking around in mm -hmm. honey you know Men have followed me. Around. My mama was reading me boots about that. Boo, take that wig. Oh, I hate that hair. And she hates that little Afro wig that I wear. That one, and I'm, I'm gonna actually wear it on the next segment. <laughs> to tell her. But she, she hates that little Afro wig that I wear. She hates it. But it's just like those be the times that I just been feeling in my space, like I'm, I'm in my down space. Here, here I go. I can't keep the men off of me. Mm -hmm. I can't. You know, I don't have a man problem. I don't have that. Those are my issues. And this is, I became complete in my transition. This is going to sound arrogant. I became complete in my transition when I really started watching every bitch that I thought was a super bad bitch mm -hmm. going through nigga problems, going through housing problems, mm -hmm. going through, you know, we in the same industry. Why we got the, why you got these problems? Mm -hmm. We work at the same job. How you can't keep no lights on? We work at the same job, bitch. Mm -hmm. Why you can't keep no nigga? Or why the nigga that you riding wanna ride me? Mm. This cause that make this this solids your confidence in. It ain't about you. It ain't really about the way you look. It ain't really about you. It's about everything on else on the outside. You got to be comfortable within. Right. Right, right. And let everything else on the outside just do its cycle because it's just it's like it's, it goes around like this. Mm -hmm. Find your tribe. Find your inner beauty. Cling to that. Display that on the outside. You know, be the best you that you can be. Somebody like, don't you worry about it, bitch. I know somebody like it. Because that's, that's just that. <laughs> but it's the truth. It's the I truth. mean, how many times we don't seen somebody and be like, oh, he must be either with her with for the for the income tax check. Even or we do it. But, we but do the, it. But the man may actually love the woman. And then we got to we gotta flip back in our brain and be like, you know what? He might really love her or she might really love him. Or, or it might be deeper than surface. Mm -hmm. Everything is deeper than surface right and you got to grasp that and understand that you are you and everybody else is everybody else and enjoy you give the best you you can do bitch worry about you walk your lane mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and when, while you're doing that help other people while you out there it's like you helping somebody we we're actually sitting here we're helping somebody right now and that's all we're responsible for. I don't let nobody, when a bitch call me ugly or they say I look like a man, I might I might do that to them. But to what likes me, I don't. Mm -hmm. I may look like a man to somebody. I may be fat to somebody. I may, but guess what? To somebody else, to, to what's supposed to be with me, it's going to come to me. I think we have to realize that, that, that in life, there's, there's somebody's always gonna have a problem with something. Yeah. They always. I mean, if, if it ain't how you look, it's how you talk, or how you walk, or what you do for a living, or whatever the case may be. You can't please everybody. Right. And I'm not trying to. I think the problem I had back in the day is trying to please myself. I didn't know how to do that. You didn't know how to please yourself, and and my problem was I was in competition with the mothers, with others, mm -hmm. when all I had to do was me. Right. And the issue that I don't have any more with myself is competition. I need to be the best version of me. I need to be, another, it ain't no other me. And I, and, and I can only be the best me that I can be. And I can congratulate others on the outside and still do me. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If a bitch titties bigger than mine, whoever want them big sloppy ass titties, <laughs> they gonna put them big sloppy ass titties in their face. <laughs> Whoever ass is bigger than mine, that's made for that person. It could be made for me and another nigga. Me, 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 
a, me a girl and, and another dude at the same time. But what's mine is mine. Mm -hmm. I was walking down that street trying to have a bigger ass to beat this girl when I had to, if I really step back outside of myself and really look at it, the same car picked us all up. <laughs> that part. That part. Mm -hmm. This is when I started getting solid in my mind, in my space. Bitch, my transition is all right. Mm -hmm. I may want to laser some of this hair off of these motherfucking titties. Oh, or laser some hair from up under my neck. But I'm going to do that because that's something that I want to do for me, not because of because of somebody else or because my, I want mine smoother than yours right. or fatter than yours or, or bigger. I'm not in competition with you. Sisters, stop being in competition with each other. You get what I'm saying? Appreciate what you have and grow to build what you got for you not to beat somebody else. Correct. Correct. Last thing I want to say before we get out of here, tell us about your campaign and how people can give to it, donate to it, or what it what tell us a little tell us about it and then we're gonna take it on out. All right. So we have a website which is say no to siliconinjections.org. Um, you can also look up our Facebook page, which is Say No to Silicon Injections. But if you do go to the website, there is donation links on there where you can donate um, toward the Divine Cast Iron Transition Scholarship. Um, currently trying to turn this more of into a nonprofit organization. So you can get grants and stuff. So we can get grants because we know how this community goes sometimes. You, you know, ask for some help, honey. They you just don't real get quiet. Yeah. But, but once we get our first 100000 then we hear from everybody. Right. So we're, we, you know, we're, we're still in that startup process, and we really do need those donations. And so we have the, the website, say no to siliconinjections.org. We also have the Facebook page, say no to silicone injections, and Instagram, which is say no to silicone. And, uh, Say no to silicone on Instagram as well. Okay. All right. Well, Talia, is there any final parting words that you'd like to say to the people out there that are watching you? You know what? Just, y'all, transition. I'm not even going to say the right way. Trans, uh, I used to say the healthy way. Transition the healthy way, not the right way. Because, you know, the right way for you is the right way. It's different than my way. So transition the healthy way and make sure that you say no to silicone injections. You don't want these problems. That's it. You don't want these problems. You don't want these problems. <laughs> Talia, it was very, very educational to have you sitting right here next to me. This was well overdue, but I believe that everything happens in its proper proper time. And I do thank you for coming here, telling me this story, and telling the audience out there the story. And for just even starting up this program, you know, I'm going to donate what I can. You see, I, I bitch, I, I, I might have a few dollars, but I, I got to keep a roof over my head, too. Oh, I get it. So I, I ain't it. got to be back out there <laughs> getting bigger titties, bitch, you know. But, you know, all jokes aside, I, 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 I'm I so happy that you started this organization. And I'm very honored to have you come here and share your story. And I wish you well on your journey. And thank you so much for saving somebody out there that is watching. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. I love you. I love you very much. I do. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a Spotlight with T.S. Mass, and my guest has been Talia Cassadine. Make sure you follow her on Instagram. Make sure you follow her on Twitter, Facebook, and all the places that she told you to follow her, and tune in with us next week, and we'll be back. Bye, Thanks. guys.